the MMA Inside the Cage, your one and only source for everything mixed martial arts. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees, and next to me, the man that never forgets his blood work, Casey Oxenine. Man, I've always got it by my side, but brother, it doesn't matter. I'm hot-blooded. Check it and see. Case foreigner. Casey. Got a fever of 103. Of course you do. You know what? If you had a fever of 103, you ought to be at the hospital right now, not here on this show. Tonight, it's Cage Brawl 6, the preview show, Friday, July 8th. The lights go back up at the Meadowview Convention Center in Kingsport, Tennessee. It's going to be a thrilling night of action. We're going to talk to a couple of the fighters involved in the historic event. But let's talk to one of the men responsible for Cage Brawl 6, co-promoter Shane Goins is back in the studio. Welcome back to the show, Shane. Thanks for having me again, guys. Well, it's great to have you here. Cage Brawl number 6, a lot of promotions never even make it that far to their sixth event. You know, how far has Cage Brawl come from that first event back, what, almost you know, a year and a half ago now? Yeah, February, a year and a half ago, we, we started it and had a great success, had a great last year, and this year we've had two successful shows, getting ready to have this one and the last one in October for this year, and I think 2012 is going to be even bigger for Cage Brawl. I'm excited about it. Sure. Now, uh, what are you excited most about this cage brawl, cage brawl number six. I mean, as far as the fights or anything, what are you excited about with it? Um, I'm excited for Stephen New, Team Gamma. He's fought hard. He's won two fights for cage brawl. This last fight, he got to fight for the number one contender. He won. Mm -hmm. um, so he steps up this time for the main event. Um, fights Anthony Morgan out of Fit Factory out of Sevierville, Tennessee. I think it's going to be a great, exciting fight at the end of the night. Well, it's going to be a great main event. Casey, Stephen New, Anthony Morgan. We've seen Stephen New. He's had his losses. He's had his wins. And you have Anthony Morgan, who just snaps that title from Kevin DePriest. It's going to be a great main event, a great match. Right. you got Anthony Morgan, of course, uh, from Fit Factory with Gene Click. Uh, and then you've got Stephen New that we've all watched, mm -hmm. you know, as he's had his ups and his downs. Uh, and, you know, and finally, he's in title contention in the main event for Cage Brawl. So I'm very, very excited to see that. It's going to be a great main event. Now, Casey, in this business, you've promoted more than six events. How hard is it to keep it fresh and keep it exciting, especially when you're in your sixth installment? Man, it's very difficult, man, especially consistency. You know, every six weeks putting on a show and then trying to outdo your last event is very difficult. I'll tell you what's going to make the difference, though, is Shane's new haircut. I agree. That haircut is dashing, Shane. Thanks, man. Appreciate I it. like that. Let's talk about this card, Shane. Uh, you can see it right here, a lot of exciting fights. I'm seeing a couple big title fights that look really good. You got uh, Del Merritt taking on Gracie Tampa's Rob Horton. Anthony Morgan out of Fit Factory, like we talked about, going up against Stephen New. That's going to be great. And then a couple of fights that have just been announced this week. You have Len Cook from Absolute. We've seen him do great work at Cage Brawl. Take on Kiara West from Faith MMA. Always a game opponent. you got to be looking forward to that fight. Yeah, I am. Kiara is a great fighter. You know, Exciting. His, his record is not what he's got the potential for. I mean, I he's fought several times at 45 and lost. Mm -hmm. but now he's back at 35 and he's home. And I think it's going to be a great, exciting fight for him and Lynn. He's very dangerous. And then Stephen Flanagan up against John Hernholm. We're going to talk about that after the break. Finally, absolute grappling stud, Wes Williams, taking on Kayla Miller out of IMA. That's going to be a great fight because you don't see Wes Williams fight a lot. You see him grapple a lot. Extremely talented. You got to be looking forward to that one as well. Oh, yeah, he's not fought in two years, coming back to the cage to fight. And Caleb Miller's very athletic. He's not been training as long as Wes has. He's got three fights, had a good win about a month ago down in Nashville. Um, very athletic guy that I think is going to be a great, exciting fight. Well, you're a BJJ guy. you got to respect what Wes Williams can do on the ground. How do you think he's going to fare in this one? I think that on the ground, it's a general consensus that Wes Williams is the best guy uh, jiu-jitsu-wise that is coming out of absolute jiu-jitsu. He's the alpha over there. Uh, and so, But everybody's anxious to see how his striking has come along, uh, how his, uh, his, his wrestling and, mm -hmm. and you know getting it to the ground, how it's going to be. But I'm going to tell you right now, once it hits the mat, Wes Williams is, is very solid. You know, okay. he, he can bring it. Also on the card, Master Blaster Mike Bailey. We got Tyrone the Beast Jackson will be fighting. Adam Townsend, Jerry Bentley, and another guy that we're going to talk to in the second round, Michael Black Johnson. Now, Shane, let me ask you first, and then I'll ask Casey, what fight as a fan, once again, are you most excited for on this fight? Just as a fan, when you love watching fights, what do you think is going to be the best fight? I would say... Stephen Flanagan and John Hernholm. I think that's going to be a great, exciting, exciting fight. I agree. Um, Stephen always brings it, and I'm um, excited to see John get back in the cage. It's been a while since he's been in the cage, but I think it's going to be a, a firework fight. 
Casey? Same thing. I really? Had to say it. Yeah, that, that was exactly what I was going to say. Uh, you know, uh, John's been over at the gym, uh, at, at the Team Ox gym on Sundays. We have the open fighter training uh, for the guys in the Tri Cities. And uh, he's been in there training. He's been working out with Master Blaster. We mentioned that last week a little mm -hmm. bit. And I just, uh, you know, seeing that matchup, it just makes me really excited to see the Stephen Flanagan fight. So that's that's my pick as well. Could be a great fight. I can't wait to see Devin Rodriguez, Adam Townsend. Big step up for Townsend. Should be a really good battle. Well, it goes down Friday, July 8th, Meadowview Convention. Center in Kingsport, Tennessee, Cage Brawl 6. You can pick up tickets at the door. You can go to any of the area Scion dealers and for a better price and to ensure a seat, go to cagebrawlfights.com right now and get your tickets. And we have Michael Black Johnson and John Hernholm after the commercial break to talk about their fights at Cage Brawl number 6. But right now, let's check out a special Cage Brawl edition of the Punch of the Week. Now, Casey, you were talking about all this Bruce Lee stuff, and you said you have some new technique you want to show me for the Punch of the Week. Well, I have gone into the vaults and pulled out my old Speedman tapes from the 80s, man. Speedman? Speedman. This is what we're talking about. We're talking 40 strikes in less than a second. It's going to uh, take out any opponent. Show me. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Here we go. That was only 39. <laughs> <laughs> Both guys are looking really calm, especially for their debut. It's a testament to the amount of training they probably put in and certainly to the quality of the teams. Absolutely. Tom doing a good job keeping his hands up. Oh, and Tom goes down. Welcome back to MMA Inside the Cage. Cyrus Fees alongside Casey Oxendine. It's our Cage Brawl 6 preview show. Cage Brawl 6 is back at the Meadowview Convention Center in Kingsport, Tennessee on Friday, July 8th. Our next two guests will be throwing down at Cage Brawl 6, Kingsport Zone, John Hernholm, and from Team Oxendine, Michael Black Johnson. Welcome to the show, guys. Good to be here. It's great to have you guys. Uh, let's go to you first, John. We had you on the show here almost a year ago. It's been quite a while. Where have you been, and why haven't we seen you fight in so long? Um, the last one got canceled. He just backed out. Uh, wouldn't tell anyone why. And uh, really, there's no other reason since then. No it's hard to find other fat guys that want to fight. <laughs> And I love food too much, man. That's, that's true. Food is good. We did see you out at the State Line Grappling Championship a few months back. You pulled out a submission very late in the match against Absolute's Robert Rowland. Uh, great match in that one. That was a real good one. He was he was beating me pretty good. And uh, I knew I had to pull out something because I was not going to win. There was no way I was going to come back in points. So 40 seconds ago, I had to. I just pulled out. And, and you were telling me off camera that you're awful uh, kind and very nice to people as you grapple with them. You mm -hmm. tell them and give them compliments as you yeah. go. Is that is that something you're gonna do at Cage Brawl Six? Uh, probably not. It's, probably not <laughs> it's not as personal. You're not in each other's face the whole time. Uh, I really don't want to compliment him when he's trying to punch me. Yeah, understandable. Now, you've been training over at Kingsport Tiger Rock Academy. How do you think that's helped your game? Uh, the ground, tremendously. Like I thought I knew jiu-jitsu, but uh, I, I did not know. It's really put me in my place. Like I know it still needs a lot of improvement, but I'm actually actively fixing it, not thinking I know it all now. Now, Casey, you've got a first-hand look at John Hernholm. He's been coming to your open mat every Sunday at Team Oxenine in Johnson City, and uh, Rowan and, and sparring with some of the top fighters in the area. How do you think his game's improved? Man, John, uh, you know, from the moment he got in there and, and got that cage work, he's improved tenfold in just in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, that he's been training, and, you know, a lot of that's ring rust, cage rust, you know what I mean? Uh, but, uh, you know, really we're doing the, the open sparring, the open training from 3 o'clock. You know, it really doesn't matter what team you're from uh, or what team you're repping. Just come in there and train uh, and so we're getting a lot of guys in there uh, including John uh, you know uh, of course all the Team Ox guys are going to be there and then uh, a lot of the guys from across the Tri-Cities sure. and so it kind of gives you that feeling you know if you train with the same guys all the time you know you kind of get used to them you get comfortable with them and so every time we have this training session we got new guys and, and it's almost like uh, stepping into the cage for real because these guys are brand new to you don't know what they're going to do and you have to adapt and that's what it is when you actually get in there. Now uh, you've drawn Faith MMA Stephen Flanagan at Cage Raw 6 uh, and you're back actually been sparring with Mike Bailey, which is a good thing because he had quite the war with Stephen Flanagan. Flanagan, um, kind of raw, but a very talented fighter. How do you think you're going to approach this fight? Uh, I think I'm just going to tr try to keep it more technical, keep it standing up, and uh, try to stuff the takedowns a little bit more. Even though I feel comfortable on the ground, I want to keep the, the crowd happy and keep it standing up. That's a good man right there. It's all about keeping the crowd happy. And I can't wait to see that fight. It's going to be an awesome fight. Michael Black Johnson, 1-0 out of Team Oxidine in Johnson City. Glad to have you back, Black. How you been? I've been all right. Just working out, chilling, you know, getting it in. 
Speaking of getting it in, I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> Black, before we talk about Cage Brawl 6, I just need to know, have you spent any time with the ladies since the last time we talked to you? Yes, you already know, I, you know, I'm a ladies man, so. I, yeah. Do you feel like the fighting has uh, helped you in the ladies department? Of course, it's always got its pluses, you know, every, every girl likes a fighter. Yeah. Is that why you guys get along so well? Man, it's a little thing that uh, we refer to as Blackamania. Blackamania? Yeah, and it's running wild. And, and this Cage is the Brawl man 6. that's bringing it, yeah. So, so you're saying a lot of Blackamaniacs will be out there at Cage Brawl 6? I think so, I think so. I think so too. All right, now everyone was ready to see you at Cage Brawl number 5. Unfortunately, your opponent couldn't make it, uh, backed out, couldn't be there. Uh, you couldn't fight that night. How disappointing was that? Because I know you cut weight, you trained really hard for that fight. How disappointing was it not to be able to fight? It was very disappointing. I mean, a lot of hard work, I paid, I mean, time and effort. Yeah. But, you know, you gotta bounce back. Absolutely. And uh, let's talk about this fight that you have here at Cage Brawl 6. It's gonna be your second fight ever. Uh, Justin Willis from Lebanon MMA, that's Zach Peak's gym. What are you hearing about your opponent and uh, how have you prepared for this fight? I mean, I just um, listen to my coach and go from there. I don't really know too much about him. I'm just gonna go in there and be ready to rock. Okay. Now, what about your game do you think has improved uh, since the last time you fought? Um, I tweaked a lot of areas, top, bottom, jiu-jitsu, everything, so we just have to see. All right. Now, Casey, what improvement have you seen? You're his coach. He mm -hmm. trains at Team Oxenine. What improvement have you seen with Michael, you know, over the last two, three months? Well, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, you know, he went down out of town. He went on vacation. He said, when I come back, I'm going to be putting 100% into the gym, and he has. Uh, he's been in there with uh, guys like Steve Thomas, with uh, Master Blaster, uh, you know, all the guys, Jerry Bentley. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, man, his, his, he's just become very, very well-rounded. His, uh, his takedown defense is getting better. His submission defense is getting better. Uh, he's been tapping a few people out too. Wow. So, all right. Yeah. That'll be good to see. Well, I can't wait to see what happens Friday, July 8th. Cage Brawl number six from Meadowview Convention Center in Kingsport, Tennessee. After the break, we'll go to the main event of the week and we'll get to the UFC 131 results and pictures. Keep it right here on MMA Inside the Cage. Welcome back to MMA Inside the Cage. Cyrus Fees alongside Casey Oxenine, John Hernholm, and Michael Johnson, who are both primed and ready for Cage Brawl 6 from the Meadowview Convention Center in Kingsport on July 8th. Now, UFC 131 was just last weekend, and in case you missed it, we have Tara Wright and Erica Wetzel, or as we like to call them, Terica, with the results. The UFC 131 main card was tremendous. Let's start with Donald Cerrone versus Wagner Rocha. Cerrone repeatedly stuffed the submission attempts and pulled out the unanimous decision win. John Olav Inamo vs. Dave Herman. It was an eight minute war between the UFC newcomer Inamo and Dave Pee Wee Herman. Herman gets a big TKO for his 21st win. Damian Maya vs. Mark Munoz. This one went the distance. Munoz said, whoa, he caught me and I was doing the stanky leg. He really landed a good punch. Big win for Munoz. Kenny Florian vs. Diego Nunez. Florian drops four weight classes in his first fight at featherweight. It was a unanimous decision victory for Florian as he takes out one of Jose Aldo's teammates. In the main event of the night, it was a heavyweight showdown. Junior Dos Santos versus Shane Carlin. Dos Santos controls the fight through three rounds and almost ends it early. With the victory, Dos Santos now earns a guaranteed title shot with current title holder, Kane Velazquez. Back to you, Cyrus and Casey. Thank you very much, ladies. Now, before the main event of the week, I have a question for all you guys. Now that we know that Dos Santos will face Velasquez for the belt, uh, I'm going to get some predictions here. I'm going to shoot it over to Michael Black Johnson. Who do you think is going to win this fight, Velasquez or Dos Santos? Junior. Any certain reason? I mean, I just think he's just an awesome fighter. He is. Very talented. John Hernal. Uh, Kane. I just think he has the ability to pick his opponent apart as he needs to. Okay. Casey Oxenine. I take uh, Kane, provided there's no ring rust there. You know, he's been out for a minute, so uh, he's got it. But, man, Junior Dos Santos, he's on a roll, man. He looked good. Okay. So we got two for Kane, one for Junior. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take Kane because, you know, we, we did pass the halls a few times over there at Iowa Central Community College. I got you. And I'm going to endorse him for that win. Uh, we're going to get to it right now, guys. The main event of the week, it is from Cage Brawl, and it is a very tough fight. We're talking Tank Scoggins against Devin Rodriguez. This fight is awesome, and it came from Cage Brawl number five. Let's take a look at it right now. Your MMA Inside the Cage, main event of the week. Let's go, Simpsonville, South Carolina. I believe Scoggins is a, no, is a natural 145er, doesn't cut a lot of weight, 
Rodriguez comes down from about 170. We are underway with our second bout of the evening, Scoggins versus Rodriguez. I don't think there's any secret Rodriguez will be looking for a takedown quick. Scoggins with an interesting stance there. Very nice pick. Yeah, all reports on Scoggins is he is a raw striker. Uh, very powerful, very quick, very aggressive. This has been really comfortable with it so far. Rodriguez a blue belt. Goes for a shot right as uh, he throws that roundhouse kick. I think both fighters just showed some athleticism with that. Switching stance, big kick to the head. Devin Rodriguez. Beautiful kick by Scoggins. Rodriguez composing now. Really like the striking of this kid Scoggins. Yeah, a welt formed immediately on Rodriguez's head. It obviously land. Today, this is uh, without a doubt Rodriguez's toughest test. Locks up that clinch, Scoggins. Rodriguez fights out of it nicely. Both fighters seem really, really talented here. Both guys really composed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Com comfortable in every every spot so far. Rodriguez doesn't look too uncomfortable to stand up. It just seems to be Scoggins' game plan. Rodriguez with a nice Rodriguez, shot. Rodriguez uh, still going for that shot, hasn't been able to connect, and now Scoggins is letting him go. It's a, it's a pretty shot. It's just not landing at this point. The striking of Rodriguez just a touch slow. Lots of big kicks. Very crowd-pleasing style we're getting from Scoggins. Very unique style, that's for sure. Throwing a lot of kicks, not typically seen in amateur or professional mixed martial arts for that matter. It's a couple hands go. Big left kick. Justin Scoggins having his way at this point with uh, Rodriguez. Nice straight right from Rodriguez, though. Gets him into the clinch. Right knee from Scoggins. And we got another break. Scoggins corner calling for action, and he unleashes a flurry. Going for the single here is Devin Rodriguez. See if he'll be able to complete that. Scoggins grabbing the back of his shorts there, worn by Josh Ward. Tempting to take his back here. And Rodriguez, let's go with that takedown attempt. And now he has taken his back and starts to unleash some right hands to the head of Rodriguez. Now, well, wouldn't that be a nice trophy for you all to submit a Gracie Tampa guy? That would be a very good thing to talk about when you get home. Like I said, man, both fighters seem very talented. Scoggins at this point. Come from stand up, come from the ground, come from the ground. Great first round. I got to give the edge 10 9 to Scoggins, Tyler. I'd agree, man. I think it's safe to say Scoggins is probably a GSP fan. A little reminiscent of him, a little bit lighter, though. Not really. You are beautiful, showing as well. Scoggins. We get ready to go to round two. Rodriguez's face visibly uh, marked up a little bit after that first round. This is the first time we've seen Rodriguez in, in this deep of water here. We'll see how he uh, reacts. We're good, right? Such quick hands from Scoggins. He's switching stances regularly here. Oh, and down he goes. And that is it. Knockout, Justin Scoggins. By far one of the best stand-up performances I've ever seen in the area, especially at the amateur level. Very impressed. Nice performance by Justin Scoggins as, as he really had his way with the Gracie Tampa product, Devin Rodriguez, and I don't think those guys are used to uh, being treated that way. No, absolutely not, man. I'm, I'm excited to see what Scoggins does with his career, man. That guy's talented. Very, very impressive showing. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Josh Ward stops this fight at 30 seconds in the second round for your winner by knockout, Justin Tate! Time to wrap up 
this episode of MMA Inside the Cage. Big thanks to all of our guests tonight, Shane Goins, John Hernholm, and Michael Black Johnson. And one more time, make sure you get out to the Meadowview Convention Center in Kingsport, Tennessee on Friday, July 8th for Cage Brawl 6. If you need to pick up tickets, you can pick them up at the door, or you can get them at any of the local Scion dealerships in the Tri-Cities or at cagebrawlfights.com. Next week, we'll break down the Jamie Varner controversy from Gruesome MMA. And Casey, you said you had a special announcement here to close it out. I do, man. A big shout out to Mr. Tyler Melee Minton and his brand new bride, Kelsey. Uh, they just tied the knot last week over at Allendale Mansion. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess they'd be getting back from their uh, honeymoon here pretty soon. So, uh, you know, congratulations to you guys. Okay, and I guess that my invitation got lost in the mail. I still hasn't received it at my house. I did move, so maybe I just didn't get that. I did get lost. I didn't. So. Casey, how can our fans stay connected with the show? All right, well, you can get us at facebook.com backslash MMA inside the cage, or you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com backslash MMA ITC. That's it. I'm Cyrus Feast. And I'm Casey Oxendine. And we'll see you next week inside the cage. Awesome. Great Very show, nice. Brian. Woo! Awesome. Black -a -mania.